Today, our question is, does a whole food plant-based diet help with polycystic ovarian syndrome, commonly known as PCOS? Um, they also asked um, or mentioned that most recommendations insist high protein, low carb. Oh my, uh, PCOS. Uh, this is a syndrome that plagues so many women, and I ran into it as a it's a medical student, didn't understand it then. My understanding of it has increased significantly since then. Uh, you see these women, lovely people all, but very frustrated with their bodies. Why? They've got a classic appearance. They're often, they're, they're so tall, they're often short, they kind of have a stocky build. And there's a masculine uh, cast about them, um, both in their facial configurations, but they, uh, noticeably um, uh, has significant hair growth. They have the women's mustache there. You look at their forearms, there's often black hair on their forearms. There's a masculinization to it. And they have so much trouble getting pregnant. And two other factors. One, uh, when you send them over to the ultrasound department for an ultrasound uh, scan of their ovaries, you see that uh, they're full of cysts. Uh, uh, eggs that didn't ovulate. Uh, you know, there's clearly a problem with uh, ripening and releasing eggs every month. So they got a bunch of cysts, hence the name polycystic ovary disease. But also they have a tough time handling sugars. They are pre-diabetic, if not grossly diabetic. Well, here I was as a second year med student confronted with this lovely frustrated woman. Uh, she's upset with her appearance, with the nationalization. She can't get pregnant. She's um, you walk around with high blood sugars. She said, doctor, fix me. What can I do? I have no idea uh, what's you know, going on uh, with these people. Now I've got a better idea uh, and I'll share my understandings with you, but there, we've got a lot more to learn about this. Uh, but um, a couple of things. One, what's wrong with those ovaries? Because they're clearly driving a, 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 a part of the problem where she can't get pregnant and she's not ovulating properly. Uh, it turns out uh, that when uh, people consume these strange molecules called advanced glycation end products, AGEs, um, and uh, I'll tell you where they come from in a minute, but they make a beeline for the ovaries. There are lots of receptors in the, in the, uh, uh, in the ovaries for advanced glycation end products. These are nasty molecules. Where do you get them? The main place you get it is when you cook meat. Uh, when you put that chicken breast under the broiler, that steak uh, on the griddle there, um, you are oxidizing the, the sugar, the glycogen in the animal muscle. And it turns into these uh, nasty advanced glycation end products. They uh, are seething with free radicals. They're really destructive molecules. They make a beeline for the ovaries. Uh, you find these also when you cook carbohydrates at high temperature, like making potato chips. You take potatoes and you put them in a hot boiling oil. Uh, you create lots of AGEs. So the meats and the processed foods flood the body with these AGEs. And women who have this genetic propensity, uh, it really uh, it injures their ovaries and sets them up for the polycystic phenomenon. But then what's with the diabetes and all that? Well, that plays a role as well because it eventually doubles back to the masculinization. How does that work? Well, and again, they're, they're, I have compassion for these women. You know, no one tells us what to eat, and especially when you're a young girl, you know, you're with your friends and you, and you go to the fast food restaurants and you eat all the, the, the fat and the sugar and the meats, et cetera. Well, it turns out that the fats, uh, especially a high fat diet, uh, unlike the paleo folks promote, uh, block up the insulin receptors so that so the people uh, become more resistant to their own insulin. Well, how does that play in there? Well, they're also eating sugar and there's ketchup in the, the, the there's sugar in the ketchup on the, on the burger, there's ketchup in the bun, I mean, there's sugar in the bun. We eat a high sugar diet. Well, so in comes the sugar, finds the, uh, the insulin receptors are clogged up with fat. So the pancreas senses the rising sugar because it can't uh, be metabolized. So what does the pancreas do? Puts out more insulin. Well, now she's walking around high insulin levels. Well, what does that do? Well, sorry for the science, but 
Now we go back to, uh, to hormones. When people's uh, uh, ovaries or testicles put out hormones, we put out all sorts of hormones. Men, we, we, our testicles put out testosterone, but we also make a little bit of estrogen. And women in your ovaries, uh, you also make a little bit of testosterone. Why am I bringing that in? Because these hormone molecules don't float freely in the bloodstream. They are bound to carrier proteins. Uh, and, uh, and when they're bound to carrier proteins, they're basically in the inactive state. Uh, they a small fraction of those molecules will jump off, do their testosterone or estrogen activity and, and come back onto their carrier molecule. Where am I going with this? Well, it turns out that the main carrier molecule that keeps these hormones in their inactive state is called sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG. What's the problem? Well, insulin lowers the amount of sex hormone binding globulin. These women are walking around with high insulin levels because their insulin receptors are clogged with their fat and they're eating sugar. And, and if you have less of the binding globulin, then there's more free hormone. And as I mentioned, women make testosterone. Well, this lower binding hormone, binding protein, uh, makes, means there's more free testosterone. And that's where the androgenic, the masculinization is coming from. These women have, are walking around with high levels of androgen, of testosterone, because they have lower binding globulin from all the insulin in their bloodstream. And so one thing feeds on another and another, and you wind up with uh, this nationalized woman with polycystic ovaries, and that's where the, the hirsute appearance is coming from. So what is she to do? Well, stop, you know, stop bombarding her ovaries with all these free radicals and advanced glycation end products, stop the, the, the meat, the dairy, the, uh, the uh, processed uh, sugar products of all types. And, um, and free up your insulin receptors. Stop eating all that fat. When people say they need a high protein, high fat, no, they need high uh, carbohydrate diet in their whole form. They need whole vegetables and fruits uh, and uh, whole foods that don't have a lot of, uh, of uh, fat with them. They don't have a lot of free sugars. They're easy to metabolize. Uh, and this will allow their insulin receptors to free up They'll need less insulin. Less insulin means more of the hormone binding globulin that will take testosterone out of circulation. All of these things will start turning the ocean liner, if you will, and start getting her back more into balance. Does it magically make all her PCOS symptoms reverse? No, this is a chronic condition, but it will at least stop it from getting worse. And may well, as the months and years go by, ooh, she, uh, the, the distressing uh, parts of it, as far as the uh, ovarian cysts and the masculinization uh, tends to recede. So she's far from hopeless. And it's not just a matter of giving her metformin and say, come back in six months. Uh, there's a lot she can do with her diet. And I recommend that she learn about it and get on that whole food plant-based diet that does offer hope for her PCOS. That's a lot of information. You sure, you sure did learn a lot about that PCOS that you didn't know about in the beginning. And I think that is wonderful because as you said, it's really something, you know, that they suffer with people that have it, but we've had several people, you know, reach out to say, you know, what do I do about this? Not just one viewer. So uh, that's great information. And I really do hope it's helpful to everyone out there, you know, that is suffering with it. So Thank you, as always, Dr. Popper, so much for that information. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. See you next time. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.